kind of wondering, you guys are now just about 20 years into this this whole old 97s thing. Uh, what, 93, is that right? Yeah, getting close to 20 years. Yeah, and here you are on the eighth album. Kind of curious, you know, when you go in to make a record like this, if it's really still, if you find yourself maybe falling in the trap of going through the motions and you have to really try for the creativity, or if the spark really is still there. It's definitely a trap that exists. And I think that we find ways to uh, to avoid the trap. A big one this time was we had a ton of songs, and so the likelihood of us getting what we needed to get done to make this huge 20-song set happen um, uh, was so negligible that we you know, we focused on that. We sort of changed the conversation away from, you know, I don't know, our the musical... Uh, the landscape of the musical industry or our career or, you know, who people perceive us to be and that kind of thing. But um, so we ended up making this two-volume set. So volume one comes out now, volume two we're going to finish up this weekend and put out in May. Mm-hmm. And you guys decided to, as I read, you went into it, um, did a residency, right? You went into this and did it live first. Yeah, which is good for us because we're a live band, you know. We, we love to play live and we uh we have kind of one speed. It's just on. <laughs> Even we did a bunch of in stores this week because the record came out, and people will come up afterwards during the autograph session, and um and they'll say, "God, I didn't expect you to work that hard at the in store." And I'm like, "I can't help it. I just I I don't know how to not do it. I'll tell myself, all right, I'm going to take it easy on this gig or whatever. My wife will tell me, you know, you don't need to bang your head so much. I'm like, well, I'm not really controlling myself at that point. <laughs> Uh, calling the record the Grand Theater, w- w- did that have something to do with actually uh, building it live in the residency like that, or is there kind of a, a, an underlying theme going on throughout the record that plays into the title? Well, I was in Leeds, England, on this month-long tour with Steve Earle um, throughout Scandinavia and, and England, Ireland, and um, we were playing the Grand Theater in Leeds, and I was in the dressing room, and I sort of imagined that, but that was part of the reason we made it the first cut on the record. It, it sort of has the feeling of a band playing live, and, and it's sort of... Uh, I've, people have thought that it was a, a live record, and maybe that was the, the only downside, but it kind of feels like it could have been, you know, a live record. Most of it was recorded live. We kept a lot of the vocals and guitar and stuff that nobody keeps anymore. Everybody does it perfectly on their computer, and we didn't. <laughs> No, it definitely does seem like I can see how it get mixed up, but it, uh, the energy is definitely there. I mean, that's what you were going for, and the, and the energy is extremely there. It's, a, it's a really a fantastic record. Cool, thank you. Friday night, uh, every night is Friday night without you. That's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good kiss-off. <laughs> and it wasn't originally. I, I wrote that song walking around in, um, in London, and I had that, just that drum beat, that kind of bastardized uh, Lust for Life drum beat in my head. And I brought the song back and played it for him, but it was Every Night is Friday Night with you. Uh And Ken Ken pointed out that that sounded kind of like a Buddy Holly kind of sentiment, a little dated. And I was like, yeah, I guess. I thought it was kind of funny like that. And Ken said, well, and Ken never listens to the lyrics as far as I knew. But Ken said, what if the lyrics were Every Night is Friday Night without you? And it made the whole song so much better. Yeah, so much darker, even with that upbeat, uh, happy tone to it. I mean, it becomes a pretty, it can be a mean song, and uh, that's really what I love so much about it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's always fun to talk to you about uh, the book reviews and, and, and what you're reading and everything. You've uh, you're, One of your latest video blogs is actually a book review for the Dylan. Uh, is that something you really do want to get into more, uh, writing uh, more, I don't know if you'd want to call it authorship, but... Uh, Sure. Yeah, it's always, you know, I've, I've had some short stories published, and, and I've, you know, dreamt of writing a novel like so many of my um, compatriots, but I don't know, man. It's, it's hard enough just to do, uh, you know, a, a two-volume old 97th album followed by a solo <laughs> album and all the touring, and, you know, forget about being a dad, which I try not to. Right. And forget about it. I try to be a dad. <laughs> anyway. I got what you were saying. <laughs> Maybe when I retire, basically. Gotcha. Well, we'll look forward to that, too. But uh, in the meantime, seriously, this Grand Theater, uh, Volume 1 so far, at least, is pretty fantastic. You're saying we can look forward to Volume 2 as early as next year, right? May is what we're thinking. Oh, wow. That's quick. I know. I like the idea of having uh, more things coming out you know, in rapid succession. Yeah, no, I love it. Well, thanks so much, man. It was great talking to you. I'll let you get back before we lose the signal here. Uh, good, thanks, luck, good luck out there on the tour.